Attention, future scholars, if you're preparing for your post this video is your secret weapon. Today we are tackling challenging biology questions that will stretch your mind and prepare you for the real exam. Don't just watch, participate actively because every question could be the one that gives you an edge over thousands of candidates. So let's dive in. Question 1 says, which of the following processes explain how glucose and amino acid are absorbed from the small intestine into the body? Which of the following processes explain how glucose and amino acids are absorbed from the small intestine into the body? Option A, simple diffusion. Option B, osmosis. Option C, active transport. And option D, facilitated diffusion. Now let's explain. The correct answer here is active transport. Let's explain. Glucose and amino acids are small soluble molecules. After digestion, they need to be absorbed into the bloodstream through the epithelial cells of the small intestine. While some glucose can move by facilitated diffusion, the concentration of glucose in the small intestine often becomes higher than in the lumen. To move against this concentration gradient, energy that is ATP is required. This is called active transport. Therefore, the main mechanism for absorption of glucose and amino acid is the active transport carried out by sodium-potassium pump system in the intestine villi. So the correct option there is option C, active transport. Question 2 says, which of the following processes is mainly responsible for the movement of water from the roots to the leaf in tall trees? Which of the following processes is mainly responsible for the movement of water from the roots to the leaves in tall trees? Option A, root pressure. Option B, diffusion. Option C, capillarity and option D transpiration pool the correct answer here is option D transpiration pool in tall trees like trees over 30 meters water moves upward against gravity and several forces play key roles the first is the root this pressure. is the pressure created by active absorption of minerals and water in roots but this is weak and cannot push water very far you can only push water for only a few meters. The next we have is diffusion. This is the movement of molecules from a region of higher concentration to that of a lower concentration. And then this explains exchange of gases, but not long distance water transport. So we move to the next, the next key um, force, which is the capillarity. It is the ability of water to rise in narrow tubes. Effective in very thin tubes but insufficient for the height of tall trees. We also have the transpiration pool. As water evaporates from stomata and leaves, it creates a negative pressure. That is what they call the suction force. This pool water molecules upward in a continuous column through the xylem due to cohesion, that is a water to water attraction, and adhesion, which is the water to the wall attraction. The cohesion tension theory explains this process. It is the major force responsible for water movement in tall trees, that is transpirational pools. So the correct option here is option D, transpiration pool. Question 3 says, which of the following is an end product of anaerobic respiration in muscles? Which of the following is an end product of anaerobic respiration in muscles? Option A, we have carbon dioxide plus water. Option B, we have the ethanol plus carbon dioxide. Option C, we have lactic acid. And option D, we have the pyruvate. The correct answer here is option C, the lactic Let's acid. Let's explain. In aerobic respiration, glucose is fully broken down into carbon dioxide and water, releasing about 36 ATP. In anaerobic respiration, that is respiration without oxygen, glucose is only partially broken down. In muscle cells, pyruvate from glycolysis is converted into lactic acid. This lactic acid causes muscle fatigue during strenuous exercise. In yeast, however, anaerobic respiration produces ethanol plus carbon dioxide and not lactic acid. 
but here the question says which of the following is an end product of what anaerobic respiration in muscles the end product of anaerobic respiration in muscles is option c the lactic acid in muscle cells pyruvate from glycolysis is converted into lactic acid so the correct option is what lactic acid option c question four this question is very interesting it says which of the following best explains why arteries have thick elastic walls compared to veins which of the following best explain why arteries have thick elastic walls compared to veins option a to resist collapse option b to withstand high pressure from option the heart. c to stop blood temporarily and option d to prevent backward flow of blood the correct option there is option b to withstand high pressure from the heart athletes carry blood away from the heart under high pressure due to the ventricular contractions their walls are thick muscular and elastic to resist bursting and to stretch or recoil as blood passes through it the veins on the other hand have thinner walls since they carry blood under load pressure and depends on the valves and the skeletal muscles for movements thus the thickness of the artillery walls is an adaptation to withstand pressure so the correct option there is option b to withstand high pressure from the heart that is why the arteries have thick elastic walls compared to the vein question 5 says the role of the loop of the helix in the kidney is to a filter blood plasma b reabsorb glucose c concentrate urine by water reabsorption and d secrete urea the role of the loop of the helium in the kidney is to do what the correct answer is option c to concentrate urine by water reabsorption let's explain the nephron in the kidney is a functional unit the loop of the helium it creates a salt concentration gradient this allows water to be reabsorbed from the collecting dots by osmosis the result is concentrated urine and conservation of water which is important in desert animals like the kangaroo rats so we have the glucose reabsorption it occurs in the proximal converted tubule while urine secretion is in the collecting dots so the correct option there is option c concentrated urine by water reabsorption that is the rule of the loop of the heli in the kidney we have question six to be which of the following is an adaptation of xerophytes to dry environments which of the following is an adaptation of xerophytes to dry environments option a broad leaves with thin cuticles b stomata of both surfaces c sunken stomata with thick corticles and d absence of vascular tissues the correct option there is option c sunken stomata with the first corticles. thing here is to know the meaning of the word xerophytes xerophytes are plants adapted to arid region which is dried regions plants adapted to deserts so to reduce water loss the first thing here is the leaf must be modified into spine the second is that the stomata may be sunken in pits to trap moisture and the third concept is the cuticle is thick and waxy to reduce evaporation broad leaves with thin cuticles are adaptation of mesophytes mesophyte requires moderate water the hydrophytes on the other hand which are aquatic plants they often have stomata on upper surface only so the correct option here is option c sunken stomata with thick cuticle that is a major adaptation of xerophytes in dry environments question seven which of the following statements about blood group is correct option a blood group o has both a and b antigens b blood group ab has no antibodies c blood group a has antibody a and d blood group b has antigen a the correct option there is option b blood group ab 
has no antibodies. Let's, Let's first of all details. define the key terms. Antigens. Antigen is a protein or carbohydrate found on the surface of red blood cells. It triggers an immune response if it is foreign. If it is new to the system, it triggers an immune response. We also have what they call antibody. Antibody is a protein found in plasma, which is a liquid part of blood that attacks foreign antigens. Think of antigens as identity tags on the red blood cells and antibodies as soldiers in the plasma. Now, I'll display a table and tell you how these blood groups work. From the table, blood group A, it has um, the antigen present is A, the antibody present is anti B, it attacks B antigens. What we need to note here is that it can receive blood from A and blood group O, but it cannot receive blood from group B or group AB because anti B would attack B antigen. We also have the next blood group to be blood group B. The antigen present is B, the antibody present is anti A, which means it attacks A antigen. It can receive blood from B, it can also receive blood from blood group O, but it cannot receive blood from um, A or AB. The third one we have is blood group AB. The antigen present is A and B. The antibody is present is none. Therefore, you can receive blood from blood group A, B, A, B, and O. It is called a universal recipient. It can only donate blood to blood group A, B since both antigens are present. The next we have is a blood group O. The antigen present is none. It doesn't have an identity tag. Um, and the antibodies present is anti-B and anti-A. It can donate to all groups, which is A, B, A, B, and O. It is called the universal donor. It can only receive from blood group O because its plasma contains both antibodies that will attack A or B antigen. Why does this matter? If frog blood group is transfused, the antibodies in the recipient's plasma will attack the donor's antigens. This cause clumping and can be fatal. Example, a person with group A cannot receive group B blood. The anti-B antibody will attack the B antigens causing clumping. This is a quick trick you should always remember. Blood group O is called the general donor. It has no antigen, therefore no rejection by recipients. Blood group AB is called the universal receiver or the universal recipient with no antibodies and can receive or accept blood from any blood group. So the correct statement in question 7 is blood group AB has no antibodies which make it the universal recipient. Question 8 says which of the following contributes the most to genetic variation? in the population option a mitosis option b crossing over during meiosis option c fertilization and option d binary fusion the correct option here is option b crossing over during meiosis genetic variation ensures survival in changing environments sources of variation include one crossing over which is the exchange of genetic materials between homologous chromosomes in prophase 1 of the so meiosis. is the independent assortment of chromosomes. And 3 is random fertilization. Among these, crossing over is the most powerful because it creates new combination of allies not found in either parent. So the correct option there is option B, crossing over during meiosis. Question 9 says, in ecological succession, the first organism to colonize a bare rock surface is usually dash A. Grasses B. Mosses C. Leeches and D. Fins The correct option there is option C. Leeches Succession is the gradual replacement of one community by another over time. On bare rock, which is the primary succession, leeches grow first, 
they secrete acids that break rocks into soil. Mosses appears after soil formation. Grasses, on the other hand, and shrubs they follow. Then the final is forestry, which forms a climax community. Therefore, the true pioneer organisms are ditches because they why? They secrete acid that break rock into soil. Question 10 says, which of the following is true about DNA replication? Option A, it occurs during prophase of mitosis. B, it is conservative in nature. C, it occurs during interphase. And D, it takes place in the ribosome. The correct option here is option C. It occurs during the interphase, also known as the S phase. Before a cell divides, DNA must replicate. This occurs in the S phase, which is the synthesis phase of the interphase. The replication is semi-conservative. Each new DNA has one parental strand and one new strand. It does not occur in prophase, which is the mitosis stage and does not take place in the ribosome which are for protein synthesis so the correct option there is option c it occurs during the interphase which is the s phase also known as the synthesis phase now here's your bonus challenge question only the sharpest mind will get this right during the process of photorespiration in plants which of the following statements is correct Option A, it increases the efficiency of photosynthesis by producing more ATP. B, it occurs when rubisco binds to oxygen instead of carbon dioxide. C, it leads to the direct production of glucose without ATP consumption. And D, it only takes place at night when stomata are closed. Drop your answer in the comments below. Let's see how many of you truly understand plant physiology. Awesome work today, champions. Remember, preparing for post TME isn't just about reading. It's about practicing smart with tough questions like this. If this video helped you, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss future practice section. Share with a friend because this exam is tough, but together we will conquer it. See you in the next one.